ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to Ian's YouTube channel. gentlemen and a very warm welcome to Ian's YouTube channel I hope you're enjoying these videos I'm taking advantage of the fact we've got no pounding rain and snow you'll see that I'm on a path here uh, and I want to stay away from paths in this video because this is about stealth wild camping now a lot of people consider stealth wild campers and they'll think to themselves well it's just guys out in woods or up on hills or whatever trying to be soldiers and wearing camouflage and stuff being G.I. Joe but it's not it's because sometimes life can get you down a little bit and you want to get away from society you want to switch yourself off a lot of bushcrafters and wild campers disappear just go um, but sometimes you can see the tent and this and that and other and if you see what people are doing people will come and talk to you because they're interested they're not being, being obnoxious people are genuinely interested and the last time I was in here remember the video I've done uh, where I built a, a shelter after everything that were around me and the raised bed and the fire and all that business while I was making that I got halfway through and a guy who sort of frequents the wood quite often he came up to me and was talking to me for 45 minutes I could not get rid of the guy and he was lovely but I was busy any other time I'd have rattled on for ages with him but I just didn't have the time so it embedded it into me that I need to make a video explaining stealth wild camping utilising this is why I use green clothing this is a different jacket this time by the way this is a canvas jacket uh, and I have a, an over waterproof over jacket that I can just bang on top of it although it's semi waterproof it's been treated uh, I think it's knit wax but it's uh, this is just another jacket I just thought I'd point that out in case anybody says oh that's another jacket right so the idea behind this is to leave as little imprint as possible actually while you're walking into camp uh, and as you get closer to where you're going to leave even less mo less imprint not that you're going to be crawling on your belly or sniping or anything like that across the floor uh, you're basically going to be trying to keep a lower um, signature as you as you come to the area where you're going to be camping so people don't see you go to your campsite because a lot of people will actually come looking for you to see what you're doing the nosy um, so that's what we're going to be doing today all right guys so we're going to be getting off this path and we're going to be talking in a minute about how to approach a location that you're interested in okay so you find a point of reference on the edge of the woods or the moors or wherever it is that you're going uh, because in advance you're not going to be able to work out your route because you might not know exactly where it is that you want to be camping you might do in case you just walk to it if you know the area but if you don't know the area you need to make yourself a map as you go all right so you need to get a compass a piece of paper and a pencil and you need to mark out the spot where you are just do a dot all right and then from that dot you need to take a bearing on your compass i think it's a lensatic compass uh, or a normal compass you can do it with and then you sort of take you make your bearing uh, into a location and then basically you've got to add the magnetic variation so that you know we did the map watch the map go look at the map video so you add your magnetic magnetic variation and say put the uh, the arrow in the doghouse or in the garage or whatever you want to call it on your compass all right and you walk on a bearing to a point that you can see okay so we walk on a bearing counting with every second step so I, I always start off with my left and then count on my right so I'll go one two and I will do that so far out into the woods or wherever it is I'm going and I get to a point where I've said I'll write down what's there the description of what's there how many steps and that the bearing I walked on and then from there I'll pick another point and I'll do the same thing again and I will basically do that all the way through all right so technically you could use the bearings in the distance to create your own little map now that's not going to be a map as an ordnance survey map it's just the description all right so when you get to the camp where you're going all you got to do is do back bearings basically the complete opposite on the compass and then you've got your distances and you've got your points of reference that, uh, written on so you can actually walk yourself back out whether it's day or night for example big oak tree with moss going up the side of it and a small wall would be one of your points of reference and it would be maybe 45 second steps to that point on the bearing of 
uh, I don't know, <laughs> 36 degrees or something like that. So you'd be following that and then if it's 36 degrees you'd do the opposite on the compass on the way back. Sounds a little bit complicated but I'm going to be doing a video about that at some point soon. As soon as I get my Lensatic uh, compass, as I think that's what it's called, it's gone up my head for some reason but I'm sure it is. Right, and that's the compass basically, it's got the little air and it's like the sights on a rifle so you can actually point and guide yourself as you're walking. So that's what I would do, so I would walk from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and I would put here clearing with stump, I would put the bearing I've just walked on and I would also put a point of reference just there. If you want to you can leave little signs, you can put a stick or an arrow or something like that in the ground, I wouldn't do that but you can. So at least, at least when you're coming on your back bearing you've got something to work towards. Alright, so you know that eventually even in dark you'd get to this point where there were tree stump and it was sort of like a clearing and then you know that it's like a, you could do a description of from that point to this point. But we're not going to talk about that in too much detail, we're going to do that again later. Alright guys, now I'm going to go out and find a location. Now as I'm approaching the location, I would be walking like this and I'm looking, I'm visualising any paths or anything of reference where people are going to pass. Pardon me. Because I don't want to put my little stealth camp in a location where there's a path going straight past it or such like. What I want to be doing is finding somewhere in the middle of nowhere when nobody's going to bother me. So I'll come back to you in a bit as we get closer in. Right guys, as it is, I'm, I'm, I'm creating a, a pretty, because I'm all green uh, and it's all sort of khaki matte green so I'm not reflecting anything. And my rucksack's green so I'm not really offering too much of a fingerprint, not a visual point of reference. So I can move around freely in here uh, and it's going to be sparse with people anyway, so the chance of anybody seeing me is pretty slim. But I want to bring that down even further. Now online I found, and some people might have found this funny, I found a little ghillie suit. It's not a professional ghillie suit, it's one that you would use if you were doing photography. And it's so light um, and easy to put on, I had to buy it. So I bought it, but I found that as I get closer to my campsite, I can put this ghillie suit thing on, but it's not one of these that hangs all over. I'll show it you, and then from here we can walk in to the point where I want to, breaking my shape up a little bit more. So let's have a look. Right guys, so here we are. Yeah, all I have to do is clip that off, remember how to put your rucksack down and I'll keep reiterating this. Two things I want to keep going on about. The first one, always make sure you put your knife away when you've used it. And the second thing, step back, drop it onto your leg and lower it to floor. I, did, I felt no duress under that at all. All I've got to do is loosen these off and pull this out. Now some people find this amusing, other people probably use them when they're doing photography. That's the jacket, it is so simple to use. All this is going to do is break up my... Have I done it again? <laughs> I keep putting my arm it wrong all. I don't know, I'm like, I'm like a 12 year old trying to put his jacket on for school. Where are we? <laughs> there we go. Let's just pull that out again. Bear with me. I'll get there totally unorganised. So I'll just bang that on there and bang that on there and these are so cheap, 16 quid on Amazon. I have had some problems with the zip, but it's only just because it gets caught a little bit. It's typical, it would do it now. The zip's fine, it's just, it finds it difficult to take on the first two bites. Go on lad, got it. So a bit of riddling about, and there we go. This is net, it's like a mesh. Uh, so it's breathable totally, and all it's doing is breaking the shape up. 
yes, some people are going to find this amusing. But if you're serious about wanting to spend some time on your own and you don't want people bothering you, this is a great bit of kit. And for 16 quid, if you consider how much a real ghillie suit is going to cost. And the elastic stretcher so you can bang it straight over your boots. So immediately I've broken up a lot of the shape of my body and for 16 quid you can't go wrong at that you can also use this mesh because it's quite it's a, it's a good size mesh you can use that for filtering water yeah it's cracking and also if you want to you can bang the hood on and you're just about going to disappear <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> Designed for photography, but perfect for being out in the woods on a stealth camp. Right, guys? And remember, picking your rucksack up there, pull it onto your knee, slot your arm through, straight up. Easy peasy. There we go, top mark. Right guys, as we Go further towards somewhere where you feel as though you should be camping. Try to use what's called dead ground. Ground, dead ground is ground which people might not see. Back there, there was a gully. Could have used that, but it won't come in this direction. Also, be careful underfoot so you're not breaking too many branches. And you're constantly looking around you for footpaths for people for dogs. Well, I can see here that I'm opening up into a clearing. So that's not going to do me any favours. But over here, there's a big gaddle of bunches. Bushes, not bunches. Gaddle of bushes. So I'm going to make my way over to them. Constantly looking around, making sure there's nobody who can eyeball where I am. Obviously, when it's spring now, early spring, so if all the leaves are dead, in, in summer it's going to be absolutely full of foliage in here. So you're just going to disappear into the background. So I can utilise this area here as a campsite. So we've done this map work, not as map work, it's compass work, to get us to this point. And then we map this off and then when we come to leave all we've got to do is back bearings all the way back out again. Right, if I think I'm going to get sweaty and such like, I can take my jacket off from underneath this and just wear this. Obviously then I'm going to go over the top of the jacket, so I'm going to keep myself cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to always observe around you, always looking around. So we get into here. And we're going to build a camp in this area here. So I'll be utilising some of these leaves for the actual camp itself. <clears throat> right, so we're getting to a location, quietly, that we feel as though we're going to be able to camp in and have a bit of downtime. 
Right, so what I need to do is create the camp. So I need to get some of these branches out of the way. I've kicked some of them out of the way. But there's a lot of there's a lot of deadfall there if you wanted to make a fire. But if you're doing a stealth camp, you don't want to be making fires. Okay guys. So straight away on top of my rucksack, I've got everything that I need to bang the camp together. Okay. In here, I've got my British Army. No, I don't. <laughs> but I'm going to need. I'm going to need that. Hang on. <laughs> In here, <laughs> I've got my British Army basher. So basically, I'm going to get this. swing out where I want it. Now I want to be putting this in a way that I can see in different directions around me. Now this ground is soft because it's got many, 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 many years of uh, leaves which have fallen down and turned the ground into like a sponge. So now I need to find a stick or a branch like this one that quick. You'll see that this tree is breaking up the shape of the front of the shelter. out the edges. This is just the configuration that I use.
then I can put my tarp inside and I'll fetch you around that way. You see I've used this area here as a way of filling the front of this in. So the shelter's built, but what I can do then is I can utilise my uh, hammock in order to be able to camouflage it even more. Then I could cover it with leaves because before we'd been slippy on the top of the shelter, the leaves wouldn't have held. But now that I've put the, the screen net on, So there you go, within minutes I've managed to get into this location. Can you see it? Let's go around this way. And that's got a good range of view out over the woodland. All this here, I can see all this from that doorway. It's totally waterproof. And I can spend quality time cooking, I don't know, doing whatever I want to do. Let's work his way in. Fact, let's go around here and I'll see if we can see anything over here. On this side you've got no chance. Nobody's gonna know I'm even there from this direction at all. So let's take a walk in. 
So I'm utilising this stuff, this fallen stuff around me. I mean, if it were a little bit more sparse, I'd have still less stuff to work with, but I've still got my camouflage netting, which is my hammock. As you come closer and closer in, you see how I've utilised that bush, that small bush bottom as a doorway to break up the shape of the entrance. If I didn't do that, I would probably use my scrim net for that. And just thrown leaves and, and debris around on it in order to break up the shape. Like I say, this is not everybody's cup of tea, but if you want some time out to yourself, in this direction, this is the way to go. Because even though that's flat down there, I can still push my feet in. It's not like a bivy bag. Just push my feet into there. All my gears inside in my rucksack. You can see there, the little lump over there, again, breaking up the shape. I'll get in now and I'll show you. In fact, let's go and show you how this room's in. So we'll go from here. These little branches are a pain. I'll just drop that scream net over the front just to break the shape up from this direction. And it blows in the wind. Nothing static. And there you go. Look how much room's in there. There's certainly loads of room for me. I'm six foot two. And I'd be quite happy in there, no problem. So I'll just set this up and I'll get inside the doorway. You can see that the actual shelter itself comes up to waist height, as many tents do. Get in here. Loads and loads of room in there. If I pull this over, the chances anybody seeing me is pretty few and far between. And I can also see all around where I am. Good line of sight in case anybody comes along or any wildlife for photography, anything like that. This is absolutely spot on. And while I'm moving around camp, I've got this little cheap ghillie suit on. So again, that's going to break down the chances of anybody seeing me. And it don't make you sweat, it don't do anything, it just breaks up your shape. Okay, so let's reiterate, we're not playing soldiers. This is just a time when you're in a woods, maybe, I don't know, uh, a woods close to a village or whatever, and you want some downtime, or you're on some land that maybe you should be on. <laughs> I, I wouldn't do that. Um, or you just want to come out and check wildlife. That's what this is for. So we can all be tongue in cheek and sort of laugh about it and think, oh, he's trying to be a soldier, but it's not about that. It's about stealth camping. And it's also great for people who want to be preppers, uh, blah blah blah. So that's just a, another learning curve. Military do it differently, all right? I'm not going to go down the military way. You'd be dug in. You'd be digging this little uh, hole in the ground. That's what they call it, dug in. And then you'd be putting your basher sheet over the top of it. So you'd have to be lower than the actual ground around you. And you'd be in dead ground. You'd be in ground that people can't see. All right. 
Um, so this here wouldn't be, it could be, but normally it would be that much lower down to the ground showing a very, very low surface area. But this is all well and good, but what happens if I want uh, a better range of view, if I want to be able to see like 180 degrees in front of me? It's another configuration we can use and we'll do that now. So, so that tent, or bivvy, is now erected. That's got full view, 180 degree view of this entire area. And as I go off, out into the woods, and I look back, that's often a very, very small fingerprint in comparison to its surroundings. The scream net, which is the hammock, has now been utilised on the front of the basher. Brilliant setup this for wildlife photography. This is the setup I used when I was up on top of Kinder Scout looking for the mountain hares. I'd probably put a little bit more stuff down that side, if anything. And that's totally waterproof. A lot of people are paranoid about not having a lot of room above the head. I'm so used to just crawling around in a basher, it doesn't bother me anymore. This, this piece of equipment can be used in so many different ways, it's unbelievable. Have a look from back. There you go. So just walking past, if I were in there, especially in such a low light, no chance. And I was not sure if I mentioned it before, but it's very rare that I actually, and it sounds disgusting, it's very rare that I will actually wash my bushcraft and wild camping clothes for this. Not the, uh, the proper hiking gear, this stuff. Because dogs will be drawn to um, smells. And if you smell like washing powder and deodorant and everything, when you're out here, it's going to be different to surroundings, so dogs are drawn towards it. And it's food and all, when you've had your dinner, put all your, your, your waste food inside a dry sack. All right, let's have a quick look inside. This uh, configuration has actually got more room. All I'd have to do to get in is just to lift the front up, hook it onto that stick. That's why I've put those sort of uh, V-tops on. Comes in handy for suspending branches as well. And you can see loads of room in there, guys. That, that, back, that tarp there on the floor, ground sheet, is for a, two, a large two-man tent. And it gives me all that room down the other side as well. Right, so now, I mean, <laughs> when you talk about leaving no trace, I mean, hopefully if you do it right, you're not leaving a trace while you're there, right? So, <laughs> when you leave, there's nothing, just take, make sure you take your rubbish away. Uh, and also, remember, from this point on, once you've walked in, with, on your compass bearings, pacing out, uh, and putting your points of reference on, uh, when you get to this point now, you reverse the bearings, alright, so you're going all... Turn it round so you're doing backwards on your compass. All you've got to do is look at where you are on your bearing, on your compass, and then go completely opposite. And then walk your way back out again. All right? Now, there's something I want to show people. Don't know how many vegans are out there, but I suppose you've got to help where you can. These are vegan. Uh, Wayfarer. Vegetable curry and rice. I know they do a chilli version I've got at home. Uh, and if you want to add more rice to it, Uncle Ben's. This is pillow rice, Uncle Bans. Bang that together, that's a full meal. Uh, if I were out for three days, I'd just take one, two, I'd take three at meals and three at rice, I'd have my water and I'd have my coffee. I don't need more than that, I'd probably take a bag of peanuts, that's me for three days. I don't, I don't eat one meal a day. Uh, if I wanted something in the morning, I'd probably just take like three sachets of um, oats and have one each morning, bang a bit of water and some sugar with it. Jobs are good. Un. So, uh, what else did I want to show you? Oh yes, it's another thing I've popped in, because 10 to a penny, if I'm anywhere <laughs> I can't camp in, I'm going to end up in water. So rather than using those sweat rags, the military sweat rags, I've thrown in a little uh, grey towel. Very, very small grey towel. It's been washed and washed and washed to make sure it's really absorbent. You can get lighter weight ones, I'm not bothered. And that, and that is me banging all my stuff in my Bergen. Um, and then that ghillie suit is so light. It's so light, it's ridiculous. Would it get damaged? I don't know, 16 quid. You know what I mean? 
Even if he does get damaged, what's it matter? It's a ghillie suit. Right? So there you go, you could bang it with a bit of black cotton on it, stitch it up. It's absolutely ace, and that'll just go straight on top of me. Oops, straight on top of me, Bergen, and I'm good to go. Right. Okay, one thing I will, before I go, one thing I will point out is that when I'm packing my bag, I've got my dry sack there on the inside, the ghillie suit, and my other really, really large um, bag liner. 140 litre will go on the outside of my uh, internal liner so that I don't have to actually go into my gear in my uh, rucksack to get the ghillie suit and the uh, the liner out in case I need to swim across the river which we'll be doing as soon as I get opportunity I'm quite looking forward to that I'm also doing a video how to get out in a rucksack if you fall in a river uh, so that's another one to look forward to right this is a point I'm going to keep reiterating all the time because I know a lot of you guys absolutely love wild camping uh, whatever kind of camping it is you're doing uh, and I'd hate to see any of you lot damage your back picking up a rucksack and I keep showing you and I keep doing it leg, your left leg back, your alternate leg back to where rucksack is just, just pull it up onto your knee down, drop it through and just fold it round if you try bending over and picking it up your lumbar spine is going to suffer eventually and if you pull your back, your back properly you're not going to be able to carry much weight I can more or less carry one, I want really, within reason. Uh, if I'm lucky enough to have a strong back, I've not damaged it. Uh, but I do do core training, uh, which would be local and global. Your local core is the muscles around your spine, your global core is the muscles around your waist, between your hip girdle and your shoulder girdle. That entire thing there is your core. It's the most, it's got to be the strongest thing. It's supporting the branches of the tree. The tree, the branches, all right? Strong core, strong body. That's as simple as that. So look after it. So we're going to head off out now. Uh, and if I were doing this, as I said before, I've got the compass and a little piece of paper or a little book uh, and a pencil with a rubber on. In the top, I would literally just do a back bearing, line of sight, back to the point of reference on my paperwork walk to it, same again, walk to it, same again, walk to it in small chunks so you're not oversighting yourself or overranging yourself too far so you're not going to be able to find your next point of reference that way you can just walk your way out alright, nice and simple okay so I'm dedicating this particular camp to Sierra Survival over in Czech Republic again go and check out his YouTube channel the guy's absolutely full of important information okay Carl Dobson Sierra Survival. Again, another shout out to PH, <laughs> Stephen Laidlaw, because he's got a belting channel as well, and I go on camps with him. If you've watched my camps, you'll have seen me up there at Mermaid's Pool with the guys. a <laughs> brilliant guy. Have some right good chuckles with him. So go and check his, his uh, YouTube channel out. It's Stephen Laidlaw. Cracking. I'm walking out now. I'm not on any paths. I can't see any people, I can't see any dogs. It's all nice personal experience and that's what this is about. Even though I've been out this afternoon, I haven't seen anybody, I ain't seen one person. And hopefully, not many people will have seen me because I'm holding a low profile and I'm wearing drab clothes. And then I had the ghillie suit on and then the, the uh, camp shelter that I put together were pretty stealthy. All right guys. Well, thank you very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I hope it's helped. I'm trying to hit on subjects which I think might be useful to people. Like the up and coming one about falling in a river, about crossing a river. Because you might be in a location like this and a river running past and there's no way to get over it for seven miles. So you've got to think of a way to get from A to B utilising your rucksack and a dry sack as a flotation device. So you get across the other side. You don't even have to swim near. I'd advise it really. <laughs> Messing around like that. But if you've got to get across, you've got to get across. So, all your stuff in your Bergen, all your Bergen inside your dry sack, lower yourself into water in a controlled manner, paddle yourself across like you've got one of big flotation devices, get out to the other side, crack your bag out, get changed again, and off you go on your way. So, that's going to be coming up soon. I'm looking forward to doing that. I love water. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching. This is me, Ian Lawrence, for Ian's YouTube channel. Speak to you all again soon. Bye for now.
Just as a final after note and a bit of advice to people in outtakes, so to speak, this entire video was done on the Olympus TG Tracker. It's only a small camera, it goes up to 4K. Um, I've been told it's almost 4K, but it says 4K on it. It's also got a logger, so you can log uh, your trip, like a, what do you call it, a GPS system. And if you're going diving, it's also got um, a what call it, thing that tells you how far underwater you've been and tracks your movement while you're traveling underwater. It's totally waterproof, steel cased, uh, I run it very, very low. I, don't, I only do it like 10, H, 10 HD because uh, my computer won't deal with 60. So it'll do full HD, 60 frames per second and 4K. And it's absolutely cracking. Down parts to it, it can't take photographs. No big deal. I've got this one. I didn't even bother taking any photographs today. Got that for taking photographs. All right, guys, it's even got a torch on it, a lamp. So if you're in dark areas or if you're underwater, then you can use the light as well. It comes with two lenses, one's a fisheye and one's a wide angle. Obviously fisheye you can use for whatever you want to. The wide angle lens is normally classed as for underwater but I advise people who's using it to just set it to underwater it gives you a better aspect ratio. Right guys, see you in a bit. Bye for now. Well hello ladies and gentlemen and a very warm welcome to Ian's YouTube channel. So what's it all about? What's Ian's YouTube channel all about? Well mainly it's about me, Ian Lawrence, that's why it's called Ian's YouTube channel. And it's spelled I-A-I-N, YouTube channel. Alright, sorry about the wind, it's a little bit windy. It's going on a little bit now because I've been doing that, doing my bonkers stuff. Right, it's a big community. I want as many people as I can on board this year, so remember to subscribe. Remember to like and share the videos, that's if you've liked them. And if you did like them, it's worth sharing it. Eh? Or is it just me? So what do we do? We go out into the great outdoors and we do camps. We do bushcraft camps and we do tent based camps. And the bushcraft stuff's great because we get to learn how to make shelters, how to make raised beds to sleep on, how to create a fireplace, how to create the fire, how to use bow drills, hopefully, and how to use thorough rods and, uh, in order to be able to create the fire. Then to find the tinder in wet weather. Oh, it's confusing. It's all great fun. We have a good laugh about it. And if I get it wrong, I get it wrong and I show you that I got it wrong so you can learn by my mistakes. And it's all about fun and positivity and nice people. So please, subscribe to start with so you get all the videos right but that wind's getting up because it's never settled out here is it subscribe to make sure you get all the videos coming up make sure you ring the little bell that's down there below so when i do upload something you can get that um ding dong on your phone or wherever it is or on your computer so it lets you know that i've uploaded something and remember to like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much. I'm rambling on again. Oh boy, am I going to ramble. Have a nice time. Let's go and have some adventures because that's what it's all about. See you now from me, Ian, at Ian's YouTube channel. Bye for now.